Welcome to HelpYourMaths.com. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to use the binomial probability uh, formula again and when it's possible to use it and how to set up your problems when you're doing a binomial probability distribution problem. So here we're going to look at a problem and see whether or not it meets up to the requirements of doing a binomial probability distribution. So here we have a couple planning to have three children wonder about the different possibilities for the genders of their babies. What is the probability that they will have A, exactly one boy, B, at least one girl, B, at most one girl, D, more than one boy, and E, less than one girl? Now, before we can actually consider this to be a binomial probability distribution, we have to make sure it meets the four requirements, right? And for the first requirement, we have to make sure that this procedure has a fixed number of trials, right? Because we need to know the number of trials before we do anything. And if you've seen the previous video, you'll know that the n, the x, the p, and the q are necessary components to determine whether or not it's a, it's a binomial probability distribution. Now here, the fixed number of trials are the three children they're planning to have. And it's the three children because each child that they, give, that they have is a trial of a different type of baby that they will have. Now, for each probability, the P and the Q will change. However, the N, the number of trials, would remain to be three, because they're having three children. Now, the second thing that we need to know is that the trials are independent from one another. And here, in every case of having a baby, this couple, their first child would not affect the second child, would not affect the probability of the third child. So we know that the probability for each trial remains independent, because if a, if a couple has a boy first or a girl first, it doesn't affect which child will be born next. So we know that then our, our probability for a successful trial in each case remains independent. Now the third thing that we need to know for this is that each outcome is classified into two categories specifically, right? And that's a success or a failure. And that can be like flipping a coin, getting a heads or tails, or in this case, the probability of having a boy or a girl. So in the case we're looking at example A here, exactly one boy, the probability of a, of a successful trial would be one out of two. Whereas the probability of a failure for having a boy would be one out of two as well because there's only two possibilities in having a child. So that checks off our third requirement. For the fourth requirement, we have to know that the probability for each trial or the, the probability for each successful trial and every trial remains the same. And here again, because they're independent trials, we know that the probability of having a boy or a girl in that matter would not change for every event, right? And so this makes this uh, pass all the requirements for the binomial probability distribution. So let's begin with problem A. In problem A, we have a, the probability of getting exactly one boy. B is, again, at least one girl and C and so on, right? So what I want to do first is show you guys how to set up this problem so that you can begin your binomial probability distribution. For the first case here, we know it's asking us the probability of exactly one boy. So here we want to write the P of X is equal to 1. For this one, it says the probability of at least one girl. Even though our P and Q will be different for each one, here this equation will become the probability of X is greater or equal to 1. And this goes all the way to the maximum number of trials. In this situation, our n is 3, so it will go from 1 to 2 and 3 inclusively, right? So this will transform into the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2 plus the probability of 3. Or in a special case scenario where we're doing at least 1, we subtract the probability of the 0 case. And we could say this is either the probability of 1, 2, plus 3, or 1 minus the probability of 0, because it's the only case that doesn't have one or more. In the case of at most one girl, this is the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, because it's 1 or less, right? And so the probability for this situation would be the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1. Another way that we could do this is similar to the at least one scenario is to subtract all the conditions that don't meet the at most one condition. So this would be this or 
it would be 1 minus the probability of 2 plus the probability of 3. Now for the case of more than one boy, we'll have the probability that x is greater than 1. And in this case, because the, the maximum number of trials are 3, we have the probability of 1 plus the probability, well, not 1, the probability of 2 plus the probability of 3. Because more than one boy would be having two boys or having three boys. Now in the final case here, less than one girl, this will be the probability of x being less than 1. And in this scenario, the only thing having less than one girl will be is having no girls, right? So this would be just the probability of zero girls. Now this is how we set up each problem, but for each problem we have to remember the situation of a successful trial being a boy or a successful trial being a girl would work in different ways. But to our advantage, each of these probabilities of success are only 50%. So for that case, we can, we can resolve each of these and still get the same result, regardless of which way we do it, because our specific situation has a 50-50 chance. So let's begin with our first probability. So here we have the probability of success here is 50%. The probability for not having a boy is Q, which is also just 50%. Our number of trials are three children, and is three. And in this particular case, our probability of successful trials would be exactly one boy. So here's where the one goes. So let's calculate this and set it up, right? So we have three combination, one. This is going to multiply by 0 0.5 times, uh, well, to the power of one. And that's multiplying by 0 0.5, which is Q, to the power of three, take away one, which is two. Right? Three combination one here is going to be three factorial over three minus one times one factorial times 0 0.5 to the first power is just 0 0.5. 0 0.5 to the second power is 0 0.25. And here we're going to have three factorial over two factorial times one factorial. And this, if we rewrite this, we know that this is 3 times 2 times 1, right? So here I'll just work this out on the side of it real quick. So we have 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 times 1. And this is the 2 factorial right here. This is the 1 factorial right here. And this is the 3 factorial up top. And we notice that the 2 times 1 just goes away with the 2 times 1. And we just get a 3 for this result. So we're going to have 3. 0 0.5 times 0 0.25 is 0 0.125. And this then becomes 0 0.375. So the probability of having exactly one boy is exactly 37.5% if we change this to a percent. But we could keep this as a decimal as well. So either of these two solutions will do. Now let's move on to the next one, right? I'll wipe this down so we can continue with this one. And because this is a special case scenario, we recommend that most students, if you're doing the case of at least one, we use this condition, the complement event, which is one take away the probability that they have no girls, right? So again, our probability of success for this trial is going to be 0 0.5 because the probability of getting a girl is exactly one half. And the probability of not getting a girl is 0 0.5 again. The number of trials remain the same. It's three children for this couple. And to, to close out the probability, we just have to solve what the probability of zero will be, of the probability of having no girls. So here we have three combinations zero. And we're multiplying that by 0 0.5 to the power of zero. This is a nice little function to use because this becomes 1, and then we have 0 0.5 to the third power. And so 3 combination 0, let's inspect what happens. We have 3 factorial over 3 minus 0 times 0 factorial. And a good little pop quiz, whenever you get 0 factorial, this becomes 1. So we have 3 factorial over 3 factorial times 1. The 3 factorials reduce to 1 exactly, and we get 1. So 3 combination 0 is just 1. 
And then we have 0 to, 0 0.5 to the power 0 is 1. 0 0.5 to the power 3 is 0 0.125. And so the probability of having a 0, uh, no girls, out of three children is going to be 0 0.125. And here we just have to complete that formula. We have 1 minus 0 0.125. And the probability of having at least one girl and three children would be 0 0.875, or 87.5%. Either of these two answers will do. Make sure that when you have your decimal to get the percentage, you multiply this decimal by 100%, all right? Let's move on to the next piece. I'll wipe off this here. Make sure you're taking notes of this if you're watching the video. Now, to get to the at most one girl scenario, it doesn't really matter which one of these two we use, because to be honest, adding up two probabilities or taking two probabilities and subtracting them from one give us the same situation. We recommend that when you're doing this, you take a look at which scenario is going to make you work less or work more, and consider it when you're choosing which way you want to work this out. All right? The same goes for the at least principle. Sometimes it's not always going to be one. Sometimes it may be three, and then you're going to end up doing more work. Make sure you weigh out the differences, because here I only had to solve one probability. Here, I would have to solve two probabilities and subtract them from one. This makes one extra calculation that I pretty much would say I don't need to do right now, because it's the same as just adding two probabilities up. Now, as far as the P of zero goes, we did use this for the last problem, because here we're dealing with the same successful trial, which is a girl. And so the probability of at most one girl, we already have the, Z, the zero, which is 0 0.125 done from the previous problem. So I incorporate that into this problem again, 0 0.125. And to this, we're adding the probability of having exactly one girl, because at most one girl is the probability of zero plus the probability of one. So let's investigate what happens at the probability of one. And this becomes three combination one times 0 0.5 to the power of 1 times 0 0.5 to the power of 3 minus 1, which just becomes 2, right? Now, this is the same exact problem we did for the, the boy situation, even though it's not the same outcome that we're looking for with a boy and a girl, but the probability numbers are exactly the same. We have the three combination 1, 0 0.5 to the power of 1, and 0 0.5 to the power of 2 which we know came out to be 0 0.375. So we're going to add this as the probability of 1 because this final result is 0 0.375. We're going to add this to 0 0.125 now. And when we add these two up, we get exactly 50%. So it'll be 0 0.5 or multiplying 0 0.5 by 100%, we get 50%. And that takes care of the answer for part C. Now moving along, we get to the last two here. And in this case, we have more than one boy. And we can't avoid finding the probability of two and three. Because here we have the P of X is greater than one. Greater than one would be two boys and three boys, right? Because we're dealing with the situation of more than one boy. So in this case, we have to resolve the probability of 2 and the probability of 3 separately, right? So let's get to it. So the probability of two boys, again, will give us the, the number of trials are still 3. We have 3 combination 2. We're multiplying this by, we have here, 0 0.5 raised to the power of nx, which is 2. And here we have 0 0.5. Right, right off of the formula, raised to the power of n minus x, which is 3, take away 2. And this becomes the power of 1. So now 3 combination 2, let's take a look at the factorials here. 3 factorial, 3 minus 2 factorial, times 2 factorial. This becomes 3 factorial over 1 factorial, times 2 factorial. This becomes 3 times 2 times 1, right? And on the bottom we have 1 times... The 1 factorial is 1, the 2 factorial is 2 times 1. The 2 times 1 goes away, and this just becomes 3. So we have 3 multiplied by 0 0.5 squared is 0 
times 0 0.5 and this again becomes all we have to do is multiply this with our calculator we see we'll get the same result we did with this line because 3 times 0 0.125 gives us 0 0.375 so our first probability here is 0 0.375 and we can wash off the sample space we have here and we'll do the second component now so for the second component we're doing the probability of three boys so that's going to be three combination three we're multiplying this by 0 0.5 to the power of three times the power of 0 0.5 of 0 0.5 to the power of three take away three which is zero so this becomes one three combination three let's take a look at it three minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. 3 minus 3 is 0, so we have 3 factorial over 0 factorial and 3 factorial. 0 factorial is 1. 3 divides 3 evenly because they're the same factorial. We get 1 and 1, so we have 1 over 1 is just 1. So the 3 combination 3 is 1, and we have 0 0.5 to the third power is 0 0.125. 0 0.5 to the power of 0 is just 1, and that becomes 0 0.125. And now this 0 0.125 is the probability of 3, so the P3 is 0 0.125, and we're adding this to the probability of 2, which is 0 0.3275. So this plus this is the same result we got for the last problem, right? So this here... also gives us 0 0.5 or 50 percent again and we can also think about this real quick right more than one boy is having two boys or three boys at most if we have two or three boys that would be 50 percent i think these are both complement events if we look really closely right at most one girl and more than one boy they're actually complement events probably Looking finally at part E here, we have less than one girl, which is the probability of zero. And we've done this probability today already because we did the at least one girl situation. And we know the probability of having no girls is 0.125 because here we see it's one minus the probability of zero. And here we have one minus the 0 0.125. We previously just did this for part B. So the solution for the last one is the same work we did for part B with the P of 0, which is 0 0.125. So remember, when you're doing these binomial probability distributions, make sure it meets the four requirements. After you check it meets the four requirements, set up your, prob your problems first by taking your words, translating them into probability functions, and once you do the functions, complete them out and solve them from there, all right? Thank you.